At this point, I would like to yield to my friend and colleague, the ranking member, Jamie Herrera Butler, for an opening statement that you would like to make. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Acting Chief Pittman and Acting Sergeant at Arms Blodgett, for being here today. Uh, January 6th, the whole world watched in disbelief as the center of American democracy was assaulted. The very ideals of democracy that make us the envy of the world were attacked. It was the Constitution in action. It was the counting of the electoral votes. It was the transfer of power um, that takes place every four years. Uh, and it was literally under uh, insurrection. The very ideals um, uh, were coming under fire. And that day, an angry mom with the intention to destroy not just the symbols of our freedom, but the people who took an oath to serve and protect the Constitution. The assault on the Capitol will forever be a painful reminder that democracy and the rule of law are not guaranteed to us. We must continuously fight to uphold them. With that in mind, we have to take very seriously that it's our job as both the American people and as members of Congress to make sure this never happens again. This starts with a clear and candid assessment of what went wrong. Um, here's the truth. Top officials either failed to take seriously the intelligence received or the intelligence failed to reach the right people. This meant that the Capitol Police Force was woefully unprepared for the attack. To be clear, the United States Capitol Police Force is not meant to be an army. Expecting 1,600 officers to hold back an unruly mob of eight to 10,000 people, many of whom were armed and had their own homemade uh, explosive devices or had came, came with or weaponized um, everyday items, it's not a position we should ever have to be in. But understand, uh, what fit, but we must understand what failed on that day, whether it was a broken lines of communication, whether it was inadequate training, um, uh, not enough for the correct equipment, decision-making processes, or everything in between. Look, security is essential, and we all have a fundamental need to feel safe on the Capitol grounds. It's up to the Capitol Police and the Sergeant at Arms to provide that assurance so that we may work on behalf of the American people without um, obstruction or fear of violence. While we absolutely must do better to keep this place secure, I have to say it's also important that we try to keep this institution as accessible to the public as possible. We are the people's house. Sacrificing the openness of this institution is not the only way to keep the Capitol secure. I don't like that there's a fence around the Capitol complex that makes the seat of democracy look like a military base. And I don't like that it costs almost $2 million a week. Um, I hope we're able to find ways to secure this place without such measures. A balance, I believe, must be and can be struck. Um, I look forward to working with the legislative branch, with Chairman Ryan, and with the different agencies involved to figure out what that balance is and to execute it as quickly and efficiently as possible. With that, I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Mr. Rep. Butler. Appreciate your leadership on all this and uh, appreciate how you've conducted this in a bipartisan manner. Uh, it's been a, a joy to work with you.